ring that bell. Go and buy a, a bayonet or whatever one buys and join the Foreign Legion. <laughs> I, I tell you, I cannot join the Legion without a hat. <laughs> oh! What is a hat? Would you sacrifice for it a beautiful doom? <laughs> Think of your lonely bones, neglected and forgotten, lying forlornly because of a hopeless love in a far country on endless golden sands, lying forlornly. As Keats said, oh, what a word, lying forlornly. <laughs> the careless Bedouins going past by day. <laughs> At night, the lions roar. <laughs> the grievous voice of the desert. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I don't think you're right in calling it a desert. The Bosnians, I believe, are only taking it because it's the most fertile land of the world. What of it? <laughs> you will not be judged by geography and statistics, but by golden mouth romance. <laughs> that. So we opened up last night. Last night, in other words, was opening night. And it, there's a magic about opening night because it makes your senses come alive. Because opening night is opening night, and you should treat it special because this is, this is a moment where everything sort of comes together. It's fun. The experience it's, it's it's like being on an amusement park ride without being on an amusement park ride and worrying whether some screw is going to come loose it's also you have made a commitment to your fellow actors and to, and to the crew that made this possible and more importantly you've made a commitment to yourself and making commitments helps us soon just slough it off because when you make a commitment to yourself you are more present in the moment and not only do you experience with more emotion really there's an intense experience but when you experience it, when you let it, it's sort of overwhelm you, and not in a bad way, because it's like, wow, I'm, this is incredible. You start to learn something about yourself. And that's what happens when you live in the moment. That, that's one of the things I like about theater. It forces you to live in the moment. The rest of our lives, we're actually taught not to live in the moment. In fact, our, this culture does not want you to live in the moment. It wants you to live in the past, with regret, and in the future, with fear. So you want, because it's what it is, it's like you, the past regrets and future fears. Regrets that you've made mistakes, that you have to get better. And the same thing with the future, with fear. If you don't get better, you're gonna be left behind. And it's a very oppressive cult co concept. And it's, you know, it's what the consumer age of this society wants us to do, because obviously, you didn't smell very good. You didn't look very good. Your skin is too shiny or too flat. You need to make a change. And if you fear the future, well then, I fear that my skin is going to be too shiny or too flat, or I'm not going to make the grade, or I'm not gonna have the best beach body in the summer. Well, not many people are gonna have a really great beach body. And even if you have a very good beach body, guess what? There's always gonna be someone who has a better beach body than you, and then you're going to feel like you did not do your best, insignificant. I'm not up on my Indian culture, but apparently there is a God Gamesh. And when you have this God Gamesh, and I'm gonna to have to look up God, the Gamesh God, because I've heard, seen this, but then you have a tranquility that everything is supposed to be about this moment. And that is what an opening night does. That is what being on in the theater does. You only think of that moment. You are getting something from the other person and then you're reacting towards it. And once that's over, then you're waiting. You're not just waiting, you're seeing how they react. And when they see other, that is in fact what you're taking in. And then when they give it to you, and they give it to you not just with words, but with their physicality and their eyes, then you get to react. You get to see that moment. And it is exhilarating. The idea that we should live in the moment does not mean that we should stop analyzing things. Because, like I said, with the way we're taught, we want to regret the past and fear the future. Now, and, that's, and that is in fact how we analyze it. But if we start to analyze things differently, so that we don't analyze from a position of fear, we can have improved from the past, and then we can expect from the future and expect to do well. 
And analysis in that form takes a constructive sense, not one of negative and not one of shaming and not one of causing fear. So for example, in rehearsal, just like when we're going through everyday life, which there are times when we're actually rehearsing in everyday life for a future event, we want to have things explained, analyzed, not criticized, because we want to go, well, how should that be done? I'm not doing this right. How should that be done? And then once they say how things might be done better, different, help you along, then you start to use the analysis to develop, to develop those things that will then help you going into, I'm not going to say the future because it's not the future, it's that moment. It's that moment where you are present, whether it's on stage or whether it's just in life with another person. And then you also do it so that you solidify those feelings so that you don't have to think about it, that it will be natural. I had a teacher who said, the only time you need technique, and there's, there's good reason to have technique, is when you get lost. You don't know what to do. Most of the time we're, we're, we're living and we're doing a pretty good job and then we get stuck. And we get stuck not just like, oh, I don't know what to do. It's like, wait, I don't feel so good. This is not right. That's when you say, wait a second. Oh, and then you remember some, and that, something that they gave you a piece of advice. And that's what I need to do. And now I can live in the moment without kind of feeling awkward or saying something's wrong. I can embrace that moment. And then, then there's always time after the fact to get some analysis. Again, I don't like criticism, analysis. And in the theater, we call them notes. And you get notes for a number of reasons. Because even though you've done a performance, even you had your open night, there's still room to improve. There's always room to improve. Also, you want to keep things new. In the theater, you're, you're saying the same lines over and over again. So you want to make sure that when you say them the next time, when you perform them, you don't say lines, you perform them. The lines are just part of the performance. You want to keep things new. Now in life, it's never quite the same, but oftentimes, and I will say that the last 18 months, I felt things were kind of stale. It wasn't boring so much as tedium, because it, pretty much it was all the same. And so you need to realize this is a new moment, and how do you approach it in a new moment when it doesn't seem so new? And also, in line with that, you don't want to just mail it in. You want to keep things fresh, so that not only does the moment not seem new, but you don't approach it in a way that says, blase, I've done this. So you go to a meeting, oh, I've gone to the meeting a hundred times. Oh, I met these people a hundred times. Well, if it gets that boring, yes, maybe you need to spice things up with your environment and your situations, but also maybe you need to think, wait a second, this is actually a new moment and I should treat it as such. And I think we should treat every moment every day is kind of a mini opening night. Now, I don't think we should have them. It's not like an opening night because frankly, if every day and every moment was an opening night, I don't think one would exist. One would end each day, maybe every hour in a puddle of exhaustion. And that would be it. Why? Uh, you, you burn yourself out. And in fact, if you think about it every day and every moment is there are combinations of moments of rehearsal, moments of notes and moments of opening nights. And if we can sort of take that and say, wait, what happened there? Oh, I, I, this is a moment of preparation for something else. In fact, every moment is actually a moment of preparation, an opening night and notes to get. I know it's a lot to put on one moment of time, but you know, that's what happens. You know, that's the thing about the theater and doing things like that. It opens up your senses to sort of say, wow, there is a really lot going on here. And again, that's what I appreciate about the theater. Because if we think that every day we're going to have moments of rehearsal, moments of opening night, and moments of after show notes, then we can sort of take it back and we can sort of take everything clearly. It goes, oh yeah, I did this. Oh yeah, that was in preparation. I need, to, I need to figure out how to do that better. And I need to develop my skills. I need to solidify it. And then there are times when Oh, I had a meeting with so-and-so. It could even be like an interaction at a, at a store and something didn't go right. Oh, I, I need to think maybe it, was a, maybe it was a bad moment in the, you could think, and this is what Ronald Reagan said, 
if it's having a bad moment and you might want to be angry, think about maybe the person you're dealing with is not having a very good day. And you can realize, well, it wasn't personal. And maybe I can help this person out when I have another interaction with that type of person. And therefore you're thinking, well, I can have a better moment later on. And then there are some times when it's like, wow, this is it. I'm ready. I'm going to enjoy this moment. Whether it's catching up with a friend or a colleague or meeting someone new. It's just like, yeah, I'm not going to worry about what happened in the past. I'm not going to worry about whether something's going to happen in the future. Are they going to like me? Or are we going to keep up with it? I'm just going to enjoy this moment. And I'm going to really, really just be present. And whatever happens will happen. So I think the theater, because the theater is a good metaphor for life. And I think that, you know, William Shakespeare said, all the world's a stage and in our lives we play many parts. Well, I would say that the theater is life. And that's what we can, why we can learn from the theater, because it is life. It is an intense, distilled form of life. And if you can get a chance to participate, even in a very superficial way, I really suggest it because it can bring great clarity on how we can deal with the things that happen in life because they are more intense. And I'm not saying everything has to be intense, but at least, you know, after 18 months, it was pretty unpleasant. So I think now, I think now we have a chance to renew our commitment to life. And we should approach it with a sense of sincerity and openness and embracing that moment. So when you wake up every morning and think, okay, let's see what this opening night is going to bring. And while I go through the day doing my rehearsals and my after show notes, I'm going to improve for that moment when I can have a sincere moment with myself and humanity. Thank you kindly.